Thank you, but please don't clap. I feel like it sets expectations way too high. You know, this this is my very first uh, time doing stand-up comedy, so you people were, you know, as we speak right now, popping my comedic cherry. So please be kind, please be gentle on the leader. Let's, let's keep expectations way down low where they belong. Uh, my name is Joe Simpson, and uh, just to set the record straight, I am not the loss of this letter. It was just like a, a bad paycheck away from homeless poor. Uh, I just thought that, you know, all moms made clothes, you know, that was just the life that I was used to. So I remember when the IZOD came out. You guys, I'm not sure if anybody out here is old enough to remember the IZOD phase of the 80s. You know, I kind of felt sorry for those kids because they were all talking about going out to the mall and getting clothes. And I was like, that's sad, you guys have to buy clothes, your mom doesn't have skills. <laughs> I just didn't know. That, that was life as I knew it. I, I didn't find out that we were poor, and I, and I will never forget this day. I was nine years old. And our principal called a uh, big meeting, and everybody in school was there. He was talking about it was going to be a can of food drive. And in every house in Spare Canyon, you have to support those less fortunate. So I'm nine years old. I'm like, mm -hmm. What comes in cans? Vegetables. Hell yeah, let's get those fucking things out of the house. So I'm all in. I'm like, hell yeah, vegetables are out of house. So we get home, and my brother and myself and my sister, you know, we, we start cutting through the closet, you know, we're like, you know, raiding the pantry. So it's like, great corn, you're out of here. Green beans, not tonight. Dins and can with no label, fuck it, pork people will eat anything. We're, we're just having a great time doing our part for the community, you know? And my mom comes in and she's like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, well, it's canned food dry, mom. You, know, you, you gotta feed the, the, the poor. And she's like, just put it back, put it back where you got it. And we're like, well, then everybody can spare a can. You know, the principal said, she goes, just, just put it back where you got it. And, and we wanted to argue with her. And finally, she's like, they're just gonna give it back to us. Put it away. <laughs> I was playing this montage in my head of all the times that I heard that very familiar phrase of, I'm sorry, but we can't afford it. And it clicked, and, and it hit me like a shot to the nuts. I was like, fuck. I'm poor? I don't want to be poor, kid. That sucks. You know what happens to poor kids? They grow up to be poor people. Mission accomplished. I, I secured my own poverty uh, in, in a very poor professional choice. I pursued a career in arts. I was a professional artist for the last 20 years. It was all part of my get rich slow scheme. <laughs> it's working quite fun. Uh, uh, after 20 years of, of being a starving artist, I decided that I, uh, I wanted to actually make a living. So I switched over and now I'm doing sales. The only problem with this is I have to go out on sales calls. Well, my car is a 1976 Cobra. Holy oh, yeah. cow. 302, lots of traction, nine inch rear end. Hell yeah. The only downside of this car is the mileage sucks. And when I say sucks, I mean like four. Four and a half if there's a lot of downhill involved. It, this is not a car to go driving around town on a daily basis. So I had to find some means of transportation that was affordable. And what I could afford was a scooter. <laughs> we had a hog. Well, more, more like a piglet. But, but still, you know, I, I was proud of that scooter. That's the first thing I've ever owned that was brand new. My ass was the first one to hit that seat. You know, it was brand new. Even my wife was pre-owned when I got her. That's that's what I was saying. So I'm feeling pretty good about my scooter. So my big brother, he's in the Navy, he's been in the Navy for 19 years. He's very Tom Cruise, and he's he's wrote a ninja for, for like a couple of decades in that. So I sent him a text message, you know, just to let him know, hey, I finally got a bike, and I sent him the picture, and he called me, and he's like, did you really buy a fucking scooter? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dude, and he's like, oh, so mileage, it's like, you know, like 83 to 90 miles a gallon. 
He's like, but it's a scooter. I was like, yeah, I'm bored to be mild. Bored to be mild. <laughs> and he's like, well, well, what did you tell Dad? I said, about getting a scooter. He goes, no, the being gay. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, but, but it is a definite, you know, weird, weird transition from the, the Mustang to the scooter. It's not the manliest thing, but it gets the job done. You know, sort of like Matt Damon. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me a second. So, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm 36 years old and I'm getting older, and I'm starting to realize that in, in frightening and surprising ways. My body is giving me signals that I've not seen coming. There should be a manual when you hit 30, your doctor just gives you this pamphlet about what you should expect. Uh, my right foot has become a barometer. Didn't see that shit coming, you know? Every once in a while, I'd be like, oh, my foot hurts. Honey, break out the sweaters. It's about to get cold. We're going to get some rain. My elbow hurts. See, uh, my wife and I, we don't have any kids yet, so I don't have that yardstick for measuring how much older I get. You know, uh, I'm just, you know, coming along. It's not like Johnny Seven today, that puts me at 32. I don't have any of that. I'm just, you know, every day is another day. And then one day, fellas, listen up, especially if you're under 30, this is something they don't tell you about getting older. One day you're going to step out of the shower and you're going to look down, and what used to look like, you know, a pair of apricots. It is now a, a, a set of pears. <laughs> oh yeah, it happens. It looks like fruit leather down there is disturbing. <laughs> and nobody tells you that shit's coming. You're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I catch myself saying shit that my dad used to say, and as soon as I do, I'm like, mm. But it makes sense now. And that sucks, you know? Uh, it's true, I'm, I'm scared to death. Uh, my wife and I, we don't have kids yet, we're, we're working on that. Practice is fun. Uh, but sometimes it does feel like work. But anyway, it's not about that. I'm sharing too much with you people. Uh, we put out kids originally because we both wanted to finish school and after school. And then my wife wanted to work, which, which was great. You know, that's more money coming into the house. Statistically speaking, 23% less, but I don't make the rules, you know, that's just the world we live in. I, uh, I, I find it weird, though. My, my wife loves to bake. Any of you ladies here like to cook or bake? See, it, 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 to me, that seems weird. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're a rather progressive couple, and, and I understand that women have fought for centuries to get out of the kitchen, to get away from the stove and into the boardroom. So I find it just, it just boggles my mind to hear that women cook to relax. So it's like therapy. I had a black roommate when I was in the army. I lived with that man for two years. I never once saw him touch cotton to relax. Oh. <laughs> so it just seems fucked up. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. That's my thought.